In this video, I just want to show you something which kind of reinforces the point that I've already been making here, which is that this parameter variable here is totally different to this variable here. It's a different variable. And another way that I can prove that is, well, let's first clear up this function and get rid of the printing of these IDs. And now what I'm going to do in greet is I'm going to change this name parameter. So first I print hello and name. And after that, I'm going to assign a new value to name. So let's say name equals Rachel. Now we can trace through and see what the value is of these different name variables at every point. So here I could say print, let's write a one and value of name in main is, and then add on name there so we can see what the value of it is. I'm going to copy that and down here after greet, I'm going to have a second print so we can see what the value of it is there. And I'm going to do the same here. So let's paste in this and say one value of name in greet is name. And then I'm going to have a second one of those down here. Two value of name in greet is and whatever it is. Now this is something that I actually do quite often to figure out where there are bugs in my code. So you can have several different types of error in a computer program. You can have a syntax error where your program actually won't run because you haven't followed the grammar of the programming language. And you can have some kind of logic error, some kind of bug where the program does run. So it is syntactically valid, but it just doesn't do what you want it to do because you've done something wrong. And sometimes when I have errors in my logic and I can't quite figure out where they are. I just put in prints for variables like this and sometimes I even number them. And I do this to try to narrow down where the actual problem occurs. There are other ways you can deal with this, but that is something that I do quite a bit. Let's just run this and we can see it says value of name in main is John. Okay, that makes sense, right? And then we go into greet. So we go into greet and it says value of name and greet is, and that's here, value of name and greet is John, which makes sense. Then we change name to refer to a different string, Rachel. And then we do another print and that's coming out here. Value of name and greet is Rachel. And then finally, so we emerge from the greet function, we return from it, it's finished. And at this point, we're displaying the value of name in main again. And you can see that it's still John. So just because you change what this variable refers to in this greet function, that doesn't mean you've changed this variable here. This is a whole different variable. And that's the point that I really want to make here. It's worth verifying this for yourself, I think. It's really important to get this clear at this stage. Of course, if I gave this a completely different name altogether, it would be even clearer, but it's quite common that you would have a variable with a certain name, which you pass to a function. And that function has a parameter with the same name as the variable you've passed to it. That just happens quite a lot. But you have to think, often you're going to be defining functions in advance before you then use them. So when you create this function, you don't necessarily know how people are going to use it or how you are going to use it yourself. So you can't have a situation where the name of this parameter here would depend upon this variable here, because when you define the function, you don't necessarily know that it's going to be used in this particular way, if you see what I mean. So it does make sense that this will be a completely different variable to this variable. But I would recommend typing this out for yourself or something that does these, the same equivalent thing just to verify that Python does indeed behave like this. You've been watching a free sample from my Python and machine learning for complete beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to 
get you started with Python and machine learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.